Hello, welcome to our audio Bible study. This is lesson 13 out of 25 lessons, and I pray that this entire series will help you know more about the God of the Bible. God bless and enjoy the series. Well, today's lesson is all about Jesus' second coming. Now, will Jesus be coming back to bring us home? Well, we know the Bible has told us that Jesus was ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago, and that uh, after he ascended to heaven, he sent his comforter, his guide, the Holy Spirit, to be with us so that we can continue to be guided as we live our days on earth. Now, would Jesus ever be coming back? Would he come back to bring us home to where heaven is? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about this. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, and I quote, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, unquote. Well, there you go. Here is the answer. The Bible has stated very clearly that Jesus has gone up to heaven to prepare a place for us, and he will come back to bring us there. He has, Jesus has promised. He's promised to return to this world, to gather his waiting people, and to take them with him to heaven. So yes, Jesus will be coming back again. Now, what is described by the Bible um, when Jesus returns? I mean, the Bible portrays very clearly, clearly the return of Jesus in the most hopeful terms. One day the trials and the disappointment of this world that we're living in will be gone forever. Jesus' return is truly the blessed hope for the world because he's coming back after he's prepared a place in heaven just for you and for me. In the book of Titus, in chapter 2, verse 13, and I quote, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, unquote. Very clearly stated in Titus that Jesus' return will be the blessed hope that we are waiting for. Well, of course, this anticipated second coming of Christ is not a new thing. The, the, every author in the New Testament mentions the second coming of Christ. And Jesus himself referred to his return numerous times. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, and chap Matthew 20, 26, verse 64. These are the two examples that Jesus had said, uh, referred to his return numerous times. So in antiquity, right throughout history, people have been looking forward to the return of Jesus. Even it goes even it goes back as far as Job. Look at the book of Job. Job chapter nineteen, verse twenty five and twenty six, and I quote I know that my Redeemer lives, that he shall stand at last on the earth, and after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh I shall see God unquote. Even as far back as Job the anticipation of Jesus coming back to bring us home was there. And what, what is this blessed hope? What, what is this great hope that when Jesus returned, what great hope does he promise the world? Well, in his most simplistic terms, Jesus promised this. And indeed, this is the promised hope, the blessed hope that we are all looking forward to. Is one day, the sin and the sadness of life will all be banished when Jesus returns. The last funeral service will have been held. 
No longer will people get sick. No longer will people die. There will be no more tears to be shed. Truly, the second coming of Christ is indeed the blessed hope. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, and I quote, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Unquote. Well, this does sound like a truly, truly exciting moment, isn't it? When everything else will be pure love and pure joy and pure contentment living together with God. Well, I don't know about you, but indeed I am looking forward to this day and I can't wait for this day to come. Well, when will this day arrive? Well, unfortunately, no one knows. Throughout the years, many people have predicted when Jesus would return again to this earth to take us home, but all of them have been wrong. No one knows the day nor the hour or when Jesus returns. This is clearly stated in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, I quote, Of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only, unquote. So who knows? No one, except one superior being, who is God. Now, even though we do not know the actual date of Jesus' return, but we can somehow surmise that the return is near. In other words, the lead up to the return, we can surmise that it is near. Well, let's have a look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 and 33, and I quote, Learn from this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has been become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door, unquote. While it isn't possible at all to know exactly when Jesus is going to return to this earth, it is all, but it is possible to know, based on the signs that Jesus has given, when his return is near. That is a possibility, and we have seen those signs. We've been told those signs. We've been told those signs in one of the earlier Bible studies that we gave, that we looked at. Now, when Jesus returns, what is it going to be like? Wouldn't it be great to know what happens when actually when Jesus comes? Well, let's check out the Bible and what the Bible and to see what the Bible tells us. The Bible very clearly tells us when Jesus comes, the return of Jesus will be a literal event. Jesus himself will personally return to this earth. Isn't this wonderful? Acts chapter 1 verse 10 and verse 11, I quote, When they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who has taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven." Unquote. This is when the apostles who saw the ascension of Jesus Christ were told that Jesus will return exactly the way Jesus left the earth, literally in physical form. Now, if that was the case, when Jesus comes, it would be a physical form, it will be a literal event. Will the return of Jesus be witnessed by people on earth at all? Well, let's look at what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 and Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. And I quote, Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Unquote. Now notice, every eye will see him. And in Matthew, I quote, 
the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and po with power and with great glory." Unquote. In other words, the Bible has just told us very clearly the return of Jesus will be a visible event and people all over the world will see him return to earth. And I pray that that means you and I as well. Now we are told it's a literal event and we are also told that everyone will see Jesus when he comes. What about Will everyone hear him when he comes? Well, this couldn't be more clear in the Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, I quote, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, does it sound that when Jesus comes back, it will be a quiet, soft event. Not at all. The Bible tells us it will be loud. It will be a shout. It will be a voice. And it will be a trumpet of God. It will be so loud that it will be everyone in the world will hear him. We can only imagine what it will, be, it will sound like when Jesus returns a second time. It will be accompanied by angels of heaven. This was in Matthew 16, chapter 27. And the second coming of Jesus will be an event that everyone will hear it'll be glorious well does it say anything in the bible psalms chapter 50 verse 3 and i quote our god shall come and shall not keep silent a fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous all around him in short, the return of Jesus will undoubtedly be a glorious event. It will be literal, it will be visible, it will be audible, and it will be glorious. Have a look at the picture on the screen now. Right now, the next question would be when Jesus comes, what great event will take place when he comes? Or in other words, what will be the purpose of him coming? Well, when Jesus returns the second time, there'll be the first resurrection will take place. The first resurrection is when the dead in Christ, those who are saved and those who are dead, shall rise to be with Jesus forever. So they will rise first. The dreamless sleep of death will come to an end. Remember, one of our earlier lessons, we talked about death. In the Bible, the death defines it as dreamless sleep. The dreamless sleep of death will come to an end when Jesus comes a second time for those who are dead in Christ. In short, the sleeping saints of God will rise to be with him and they will be dead no more. This was clearly explained in the earlier verse that we quoted, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. And then after the dead in Christ were raised, some other major events takes place. It's an incredible transformation that takes place in the living saints when Jesus returned. Those who are alive when Jesus returned, those who are alive and are saved, the saints. When Jesus returns, the believers on earth, those who are not dead, will receive immortal, eternal bodies. The righteous at Christ's return will never again endure physical distress. Aches and pains will be gone as God gives them new bodies, immortal, new, glorious bodies in which they will live eternity, eternally. In other words, the living in Christ, those who are saved, will also be called up to Christ together to join those who uh, are resurrected from the dead, the saints who were resurrected from the dead. So these two great events up in the clouds, Jesus will have the dead in Christ joining him first, and then the alive in Christ will receive immortal, 
incorruptible bodies and will join Jesus second up in the clouds. And then together, they will all be traveling back to the mansion that Jesus had gone to prepare for them. I can imagine that day to be a truly glorious, audible, literal, and a beautiful event. And also Jesus did give a very, very clear warning what also happens at the second coming. Now, he compared his second return with the flood that covered the earth in the days of Noah. Jesus warned that indifference in this world would affect the world. Most people will be carrying on just normal in their daily lives, apathetic towards spiritual realities. For those who rejected God's truth, God's free gift, for those who suppress the truth, their life will be normal, just like it was before the floods came. People would know what's happening. They might be driving to work. They might be listening to a Bible study like this. They might be just simply taking a walk in a park or going to a marriage or offering their daughters to be married. Just normal, everyday life. And then when Jesus comes, everyone will be taken by surprise. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39 clearly states this warning, and I quote, As the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them all away, so also will be a coming of the Son of Man. Unquote. In short, for those who have rejected the free gift of grace, they will be excluded from Jesus calling his righteous saints to join them. They will be left on earth and they will be destroyed. Now, what's happening when Jesus comes a second time has also created a degree of misunderstanding. Some think that when Jesus comes, one would be taken away, another would be left, meaning it could be a husband is taken away, or a wife taken away, or a bus driver suddenly disappears when he's driving, or a friend might suddenly disappear. Those are the mis understanding of what the Bible was trying to say. The Bible wasn't saying that. Let's look at where this verse that caused confusion is. Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 to 42, I quote, Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the, one le the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the hour your Lord is coming. So what is, this what is this verse trying to say? What is Jesus trying to say when he talks about this? Well, Jesus simply says he's trying to help us understand the meaning of his passage by comparing events at his return with what took place in the days of the Noah. Well, in Noah's days, there were two groups of people. Those who got on the, the ark or into the ark and were saved, and those who did not get on the ark and were not saved. So in the end, Jesus was comparing two groups of people, the saved and the unsaved. And he tells us that when he returns, circumstances on this planet will be as they were in Noah's days. One group of people will be saved and another will be lost. People in similar situations, two men will be in the field. That's what Jesus meant. People in similar situations and with similar opportunities. And that's what two women will be grinding on the mill meant. Will meet with different faith. One will be saved and the other one will be lost. So in Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 to 42, Jesus was simply saying, comparing the saved and the unsaved when he comes. 
when he comes, there'll be two groups of people. And I'm sure you and I do not want to be in a group of people who are not saved. Now, there are also other misinterpretations of the Bible. One misinterpretation was seen as the return of Jesus is going to be very secret. And this was seen, and let's read Matthew chapter 24 and verse 26. And I quote, it says, If they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe in it. So is the return of Jesus going to be a secret? Well, Jesus specifically stated that we should not believe that his return will be a secret event. If someone were to claim that Jesus had returned and was in a specific location, that you have to go and see him or make a special trip to go and see him, we should likewise reject that claim because Jesus, when he will return, it will not be secret. Everyone, everyone will know it and everyone will hear it. You see, unfortunately, some people teach that the return of Jesus is going to be a secret, quiet event, that he will first return for the saved believers and then return again some other time later for those who have become ready after they've been given a second chance. Nowhere does the Bible talk of a secret coming, second coming of Christ or a secret third coming nor does it indicate that those who are not ready for the return of Jesus will be given another opportunity to be saved. That interpretation is not biblical. In fact, the Bible stated very clearly what will precede the second coming of Christ. In other words, before Jesus re returns, what are those major events or major signs that we can see. Well, in the Bible it states clearly, before he returns, Jesus returns, the adversary, Satan, will work with great powers to deceive as many people as he can. Paul wrote that Satan will work with all powers, signs, and lying wonders. He, Paul wrote it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. And recognizing that Satan recognizing that not only has he has a short time left in which to deceive the world, Satan tries to work miracles calculated to destroy the faith of God's people on this earth. Because Satan knows without faith, God's people will not last the distance. So these are the signs preceding Christ's second coming. Revelation chapter 16 verse 14 and Matthew verse 24, uh, chapter 24 verse 24. In Revelation I quote, They are the spirits of demon performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Unquote. In Matthew I quote, False Christ and false prophets will rise to show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Unquote. Our adversary preceding second, the second coming of Christ will do all those wonders to deceive everyone, to bring everyone down with him, as many people as possible. And what it means is, Jesus has urged us, he has warned us to be ready, he has warned us to watch out. Jesus urges us to be ready for his return because we cannot know exactly when the return of Jesus will be. It is vitally important that we live in a state of constant readiness for his second coming. Peter warned that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? You know, casting doubts about Jesus' second coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, in other words, since a long, long time ago, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In other words, Paul is writing there, watch out. There will be people that says, you guys are waiting. You have waited all your life and yet Jesus hasn't come. So don't believe in that. That is a false information that the adversary will put out there to stop us in our faith. 
It is important, therefore, to get ready and be vigilant and be strong in these last days for the second coming of Christ and stay connected to the Lord. Because if we don't, we will be fooled. Even the elect would be fooled. Matthew chapter 24 verse 44 and Mark chapter 13 verse 37. I quote Matthew. Therefore, you also be ready, unquote. And I quote Mark. What I say to you, I say to all, watch out, unquote. In short, Matthew and Mark is telling us to watch out and be ready and do not be fooled. See, if we ask the questions, how can we be sure? How can we be certain that they will be ready, that we'll be ready to meet Jesus as he returns? Well, we can be sure by looking at what the Bible tells us and teaches. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, and in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, and I quote from Acts, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. That's how we'll be sure. Once you believe, once you accept the Lord, you'll be saved. And in Revelation, I quote, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me, unquote. By accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and by confessing your sins and living in a life of surrender to our God, you can have the assurance, the absolutely, absolute certainty and guarantee to have everlasting life. And you'll be guaranteed you'll be ready for Jesus at his second coming. So, let me ask you this question before we conclude. Are you willing to surrender your life to Jesus? Are you ready to invite him into your heart? and live by faith in Jesus in preparation for his second coming? Well, I pray in the quietness of your heart, the answer to this question is yes, I am willing. God bless.